In this video, I'll show you why feathering the light can help you to control light, and I'll dispel a common misconception about feathered light. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that's got everything for us photographers. And in this video, I'm going to have a look at feathering a light. Now, feathering, it's just another way of saying turning a light. And you might think, well, the most obvious way to turn a light is towards your subject. And to be honest with you, most of the time, that's exactly the right thing to do. But occasionally, feathering or turning your light away from your subject is going to give you a bit more control over the light. And it's that, that I'm going to have a look at in this video. So let's get a light set. Let's get a model in. Let's get shooting. So to help me out today, I've got the amazing Jade. Jade's going to be the model for this shoot. And I'm going to start with some basic use of feathered light. So I've got my light in a soft box and it's facing Jade fairly directly. I've already metered this out, so I know we should get a good exposure. Let's get my camera and see how this looks. Okay, Jade, here we go. And sure enough, we get a great shot of Jade, nicely exposed. The background is lit, but it's not too bright. So feathering the light is just another word for turning the light. So if I turn the softbox away from Jade and towards the background, there's a few things that we can imagine might happen. Obviously, there will be less light on Jade and there will be more light, particularly on this side of the background. And that's the theory. Let's take this shot, see how it looks. OK, Jade, here we go. Yeah, that's exactly what happened. Jade has much more of a moody, shadowy look, and the right-hand side of the frame is definitely brighter. Perhaps the more common way of feathering the light is away from the background and also away from Jade. So now the light is facing really parallel to me here. Hardly anything is going to reach Jade. Or is it? Well, there's a simple way to find that out, and that's to ask your model. So Jade, can you see anything of the white on that softbox? Yeah. If Jade can see the white of the softbox, light will reach her. But of course, back here, I can't really see the softbox so much. So in theory, the background should go darker. Well, let's find out. Let's take a picture. Here we go. Yeah, and that works beautifully. Jade is correctly lit, but that background is much, much darker. It's not completely black because in my small home studio, light still bounces around the walls and ceilings, and eventually something will reach the background and illuminate it. So why would you want a darker background? Well, the answer is really simple. It's control. If you have a dark background, you could add a second light, and you can use that light to illuminate the background in a way that's different than you would have with just one single light. So I've got a light right behind Jade, pointing at the background. Let's see how this looks. Okay, here we go. So now I've separated Jade from the previously dark background by adding in a controlled splash of light. So one thing you may have heard in the past is that feathering the light gives you a softer result. The edge of your light is the softest part. Well, maybe we should clear that bit of misinformation up. So what I've got is the light pointing straight at Jade. Jade's up against the background. She should cast a shadow over here. Let's see how it looks. OK, Jade, let's just take a couple of shots like that. Right. By looking at these pictures, they look perfectly fine. There is a shadow behind Jade. It's not that bad at all. It's fairly soft. So now I've feathered the light towards me and away from Jade, so she's now being lit by the very edge, the softest part of the light, which should mean the shadows just blend into nothing. Well, let's see if that's true. Here we go, Jade. And a quick glance at these photos says that no, the shadows, if anything, are harder than they were before, where they were lovely and soft. Now there is a definite and defined outline. So why didn't that work? Well, it's all down to feathering the light. When it's pointing straight at you, it's quite a large light source. But as I feather it away, it becomes smaller from your point of view. Therefore, smaller light, harder light, harder shadows. What you can say, however, is the edge of the light is more evenly illuminating than the centre. Of course, by feathering the light, I've also made it a thinner light, at least from Jade's point of view. And I can show you that very clearly if I give her some sunglasses. 
So at the moment, I've got a light facing this way. If I turn Jade straight into the light, the reflection is filling the sunglasses, which sometimes looks great and sometimes doesn't look so good. So I feathered the light to a fairly extreme angle and that's gonna have a couple of impacts. The first one is it's gonna affect the exposure on Jade. I've checked that already. The next is the reflection on the sunglasses looks much thinner. It actually looks like I used a strip box but remember, if you're using a feathered softbox, you won't get the same control of the direction in light as you would with a strip box. Of course, turning your light side to side isn't the only way you can feather. You can also feather it vertically as well. Now, this gets a bit more challenging in a small home studio with a low ceiling. So I've got Jade sat down for this one. And what I'm interested in is the amount of light that reaches the floor. So at the moment, I've got the light set in a standard lighting position. The wall behind Jade is lit, the floor underneath her is lit. It all looks very safe and sensible. So I'm gonna feather the light vertically. Let's do it perhaps the, the wrong way. I'm gonna feather the light down. So now the light is pointing more towards the floor. From Jade's point of view, she can still see the white of the softbox. So in theory, some light should reach her. Not sure it's gonna be great light, but let's have a go. Here we go, let's see how this looks. So the background above Jade is noticeably darker, which makes sense because we feathered the light away from the top of the background and the floor is, well, brighter. The light on Jade, however, perhaps not the most flattering. So if I feather the softbox in the other way, pointing it up, what should happen in theory is the floor will go darker, but the background up the top will become brighter. Now that might be a more useful thing to do if you want to control the illumination on the floor, but in my small home studio, it throws up a bit of an issue because the ceiling height is quite low. It's also painted white, so light just bounces off the ceiling, rather diluting the effect. So what I've done is I've put a black flag, which is a five in one reflector, and just sort of put it up on the ceiling to try and make the effect a bit more obvious. And of course we can mix all of these together to create a final picture. So let's get a light in the background, we'll feather the light in the other direction and we'll take a few pictures. So Jade, are you ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go for it. The effect you'll get from feathering your light will vary depending on your light modifier. For example, if you're using something like a beauty dish, even a little bit of feathering will have a dramatic effect. However, something like a shoot through umbrella can be feathered an awful long way before you see any real difference. Whatever sort of light modifier you're using, have a practice before you do your shoot. Now, if you've got any questions or you've enjoyed this video, leave me a comment below. Click on the bell icon for regular notifications of all the brand new videos right here on Adorama TV. And of course, don't forget to click on that subscribe button. I feathered the light. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching.